Okay, Sophie, so we're going to go through taking a manual blood pressure measurement today. Okay. Um, we have done some um, about something around blood pressure in our theory before, so yeah. I'm just but I'm just going to go through the practical steps now that we need to take in order to take a manual blood pressure reading. No problem. Okay, can you remember what we're measuring when we're measuring blood pressure? So we're measuring the pressure of the blood through the arteries? That's right, yeah, so we're measuring the blood as it pumps around the body as it goes through the arteries. Yeah. Um, it's a really important measurement in clinical practice, just to, it's a good measure of how healthy somebody is or if they're ill or whatever, so we, um, we do take this measurement quite a lot. You may have seen in hospital as well, they use the ma the automated um, yeah. ones yeah, a lot. Seen have you seen those? Yeah. Um, they are very useful, but they do have the limitations, and sometimes they're not accurate for all sorts of patients. So it's really important that you maintain your technique with the oh, manual. Okay. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, Maria is our patient. Hello, Maria. Um, Sophie. Um, so what we're going to do, I'm going to demonstrate this skill on Maria. So before we undertake the procedure, we'd obviously wash our hands um, and obviously make sure we gain consent from the patient before we undertake the task. Okay. So in order, for the technique, what we need to do, first of all, we need to be able to locate where the brachial artery, because we're going to take the blood pressure on the arm. So if you um, look at your arm yourself, um, this area of the arm is called the antecubital fossa, okay. um, at the inside of the elbow, and that's there's a, an artery, a main artery called the brachial artery that runs down the arm. So if you could just, if you try and palpate your own brachial artery, Sometimes if it's difficult, it can be difficult to feel on some patients, so if you extend the elbow a little bit more, sometimes that helps to, to take, to find the pulse. And okay. Find it. Yeah. Okay. Right, so I'm going to do the same on Maria now. Thank you. There we are. I can find a nice strong brachial pulse there. So what I'm going to do now is make a note of where, roughly where I, I found the pulse, because that's the area where I'm going to be putting the, the um, dial from the stethoscope when I listen a little bit later. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we need to place the cuff um, on the arm. We need to make sure that the cuff's an appropriate size for the patient. Um, and what I'm going to do, because I've noted where the brachial artery is, I'm now going to place the cuff a few centimetres above that, because that's where I'm okay. going to need to put the stethoscope. If you notice on the cuff, there's a little arrow saying artery, oh, okay. yep. and that's where, the, um, that's where you place the cuff. Yeah, so you just need to wrap it around snugly. You need to make sure there's no tight clothing or anything because that can obviously affect the measurement. Does that feel alright? Fine. Thing? Yeah. And what I'm going to do as well, I'm going to get a pillow and I'm going to support Maria's arm like so. Okay. If the arm's either too high or too low, it can really affect the the measurement. So it's important that the arm's supported, the patient's relaxed and is in a sort of relaxed state because that can affect the reading as well. Okay. So we've got our SVIG here. Um, we also need a, a stethoscope as well for this. But the first step is what we're going to do is going to need to close off the valve here. And what I'm going to do is I, I'm going to palpate the brachial artery like we did before. And what I'm going to do with my SVIG here, if you can see, is I'm going to pump up the cuff. Um, until I can no longer feel the pulse any longer. And when I can no longer feel the pulse, I'm going to make a, a rough estimate of the reading at that point. Okay. Okay. And then I'm going to let the cuff all the way down. So that's now my estimated systolic reading, because if you remember, blood pressure's got the two measurements, yeah. the systolic and the diastolic, so that's the estimated systolic reading. So now for the next step, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, I need to get my stethoscope. Now we use stethoscopes a lot for listening to sounds and patients in yeah. different parts of the body, but for this particular one, we tend to use the diaphragm, the stethoscope. Okay. So now I'm going to paste the diaphragm of the stethoscope over the area of the brachial artery. Okay. And this time, when I pump it up, I'm going to pump it up to about 20 to 30 millimetres of mercury above the estimated systolic reading. And then I'm going to let the cuff down very, very gradually to try and actually take the measurements. Right. Um, if you remember, there's two sounds we listen for. The first sound is when we put the first tapping sound, is the first cropped off yeah. sound. And that's the systolic reading. The, when the sound disappears, that's the fifth cropped off sound. And that's when we take the diastolic reading. Right. Okay. Are you okay? Yeah, fine. Thank, Thank you. you. This is the hard bit to let it down very, very gradually. Yeah, 
There we are. So you only lift the, you let the cuff down. And so then I could hear the first tapping sound around 120 and, and the sound disappeared at 78. So that would be 120 over 78, the blood okay. pressure. Okay. Um, so after the reading, and um, then obviously it's important to document it very carefully in the notes. Um, one thing to say about this procedure, it is something that you need to practice a lot. You'll find when you go on your clinical placement, now it's really important yeah. that you practice a lot on patients because it can at first, it's a skill that needs to be mastered. It can be difficult to yeah. hear. And if you don't get it first time, it's okay to let the patient rest for a few minutes and then try it again. Yeah. And different patients will be, you know, uh, some are clearer than others to hear. So, um, and it's something that, that the NICE guidelines even say it's important for qualified practitioners to practice this technique regularly to maintain their, okay. their currency.